Hi, Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. Let's talk about the news feed ticker. That's this tool in the 90 Second Website Builder toolbox that you can drag out onto the canvas, draw a box, and put in a news feed ticker. Well, what's that? Before we can talk about this tool, let's talk about what that is. A news feed is information you can feed to your website from another website, basically. It's usually news, like headlines, or a feed from a blog, something like that. But there's a lot of different kinds of news feeds. Let's look at some examples. If you were to feed news from a blog, here's my blog, the 90 Second Website Builder blog. If you wanted to feed the news from this blog to your website, you'd need the link to the feed, and you'd use the news feed ticker tool to get it there. So this is what that link looks like. Not very pretty because a news feed blog is just an XML file, it's called, and it's data that feeds to your website. When it gets to your website, it's formatted to look pretty, but this is what the file looks like that we're gonna feed. You can do that with pretty much any major news site. In fact, here's NASA's collection of feeds that you can use. So if you wanted to get one of their feeds to your website, they have a bunch of them. So we wanted news about the space station fed to our website. We'd go get their feed and it looks like this. Again, not a pretty picture, but this is not what it looks like when it gets to your site. Sometimes a news feed is formatted. If you wanted to use the BBC news feed, Theirs look a little pretty, sometimes they look like this, but it doesn't really matter how this file looks because again, you're not gonna see this. This is the data that you're gonna feed to your website. And to do that, you need to know what this address is. So that's kind of an overview of what news feeds look like or XML files look like. In 90 Second Website Builder, the news feed ticker tool gives you a lot of options. It can get pretty overwhelming because there are so many different things you can do. So let's break it down a little bit. First of all, when you use a newsfeed ticker, you wanna decide what your data source is gonna be. Let's talk about these. Basically, there's two groups, even though you can see that there's five options. These three options here are similar in that if you wanted to get news from a social media site like Twitter, Flickr, or Facebook, they do it a little bit differently. Facebook and Twitter actually require you to have what's called a token or an access ID. If you were gonna feed uh, news from Facebook, you'd need to get a Facebook ID from developers.facebook.com. You'd need to get an access token. It's a little bit more complicated. In fact, sometimes it's a lot more complicated. And then there's actually easier ways to get the Facebook uh, page feed to your site if you used a JavaScript. In fact, there's one in the ready to use JavaScripts over here that makes this even easier. But if you wanted to tackle this, this tool makes that possible. Twitter also has some similar requirements. If you select this option, you'll need all of this information. So in this video, I'm not gonna talk about these more complex ways of getting social media data. Most of you, most people are gonna use a news feed ticker for what's called an RSS feed. That's getting news from another website, fed to your website, or at least the headlines to that. And we're also gonna talk about a nice trick called the user defined feed. We'll do that as well. But first, the RSS feed. The first thing you need to know about an RSS feed is that there's three different kinds. There's the kind where you get the feed from your own website. For example, let's say you have a blog like I do. I've got 90secondwebsitebuilder.com forward slash blog. And if I wanted to feed the headlines from my blog to another part of my same website, I would use an RSS feed that uses this data retrieval option. It's called an HTTP get request. So this is used for sending information within the same website, the feed from one part of my website to another page. I'll show you a demo of all of these in a minute. The other two ways are what you would use for getting a feed from another website. So for example, if I wanted to get the BBC News headlines on my website or NASA Space Station headlines, I would use one of these. Now, which one of these you use is gonna be dependent entirely on your web hosting account. You're gonna need, first of all, a web host that provides PHP, and most all of them do, so that's usually not a problem. But you're gonna need your host to provide one of these ways of doing this, and we'll go into it a little bit further as I demonstrate them, but you have two different options. One of these, if not both of them, at least one of these should work, and you may even have to do a little trial and error to see which one your host supports. So we'll talk about that as we move on. So to make this video a little bit easier to look at, I've made examples of all of those. Let's take a look at this page. First of all, 
I set up a newsfeed ticker and you can see it right here in the middle of the screen. Let's move the camera over to center things a little bit. This is the newsfeed ticker object. I've got everything on this particular page and all of the pages you see in this video are going to be using layout grids. Each one of these sections of the page is a layout grid. I did that because I want the page to be responsive and so that'll take care of it for us. Newsfeed triggers are responsive as long as we put them in a layout grid. If we double click on this object and see how I have it configured, you can see it's an RSS feed as opposed to a social media feed or a user defined. And the type of RSS feed I'm using here is the HTTP get request because this is a feed that gets information from my blog to another page on my website. So this page will be stored on 90secondwebsitebuilder.com and it's gonna go get the feed from the 90secondwebsitebuilder.com blog. And the address to that, since it's local, I don't need the whole URL in here. I just need to know the path blog feed. Again, we'll take a look at it here in a second. And by the way, this is not something we can preview to see how it works because we're getting information from websites that are online. So these have to be published to the web. And I've got some that you can look at here in just a minute. So this particular page is gonna get data from my own website. So let's go take a look at it. I've already published it to the web. So let me pull it up here for you. So this is what it looks like. Here's the link to this. It's on my domain and it's getting headlines from my blog. It's an HTTP get request. And so these are the headlines and you'll notice when I hover over it, it stops because that's what happens when you hover over a feed. It stops so you can read it. And in fact, each one of these headlines can be clicked on. If we were to click on one of these headlines, we'd actually go to that article on my blog. Let's click this one and you'll see that it takes us to the blog and it takes us specifically to that article. And we can go back and we're back at the HTTP get request. So that's how you use this particular news feed. Again, it's for getting information within the same domain. And that's what it would look like. The fact that it scrolls like this is something that I can configure as well. And I do that in here where I choose my viewer type. And this one was a continuous scroll. We'll look at some more of these in a minute as well. Let's move on to another kind of RSS feed. Let's look at the proxy PHP. So if we double click on the newsfeed ticker, you can see again, I'm using an RSS feed with continuous scroll. This time I want to feed information from BBC. So I can't use the HTTP get, that's only from my local domain. And this time I need the full address of the feed. I need to get the full address to their blog and their feed address, which usually ends with an RSS.xml, usually, not always. And I'm retrieving this through something that's called a proxy, which requires PHP. And since I'm hosting with Cloudwire, it provides that. Let's click OK and let's see what this looks like online. I've got one already published and let me drag that into the camera here. OK, so now you can see that I am getting information from the BBC to my website. I'm on 90secondwebsitebuilder.com, but this information is coming from another website and it's doing so because I'm using that proxy. And again, as I hover over these headlines, it will stop so that I can read it. It also provides a link so I can go to their website and read that article. So if I click on one of these, like this one, it should take us to the BBC website. And sure enough, there we are. And there's their blog. So if your host provides PHP, you wanna figure out if you wanna use the proxy version or if you wanna use the curl version. It's the same idea and it looks the same. The difference here is, the only difference here is you would pick the option load through curl instead of proxy, but the end result is the same. So that pretty much covers how to get an RSS feed to your website using one of those three methods, either the local method or the two external website methods. Let me show you something else that's actually really kind of cool about 90 Second Website Builder, and that's using a user-defined news feed. I'm going to double click on this and show you that here, instead of selecting RSS, we're using user-defined and what this does is this does not go get a feed from another website or another part of your website. It's actually coming from the very same page. This is something you would use where you would type in your own headlines. You would type them into the actual newsfeed ticker. You can have a headline, a description, and those are optional. And you can even have a link to another website. So you could literally make your own news, your own headlines, but have them appear in the form of a newsfeed. Let's go see what that looks like. 
And again, I have published this to the web, but we don't have to publish this to see it. This one can actually be previewed because we're simply getting information from this page. So we don't have to be online to test this one. I'm clicking F5 and bringing up the local version of this. So you can see we're not actually online now. We're doing this in preview. And you can see what the news feed looks like. Since we're using user defined and it's pulling these headlines from this page, we can see how it looks. I did happen to publish it as well. So let me show you what it looks like online. It should look the same, but just so you know, when I published it online, so here we are at this address, here's my news feed. And here I've created a headline that has a link. So if we were to click this link, I linked it to a website that is my hosting account, which is cloudwire.com. So that's a link that I made in my news feed. Okay, and we could go back and see the news feed. Pretty simple to do. Now let's talk about these effects. You can see this one is a continuous scroll. That's what I've been using in all of the demonstrations so far. But remember, each one of these data sources came with different viewer types. You could use continuous scroll or you could use some of these other effects. Let's see what they look like. In this example, I used the slideshow viewer type. And again, I'm just using my own user defined. I'm gonna click F5 so we can see what it looks like. That's what the slideshow looks like. Instead of scrolling continuously, it moves like a slide. I also have this published online. So let's go look at it online. Here's my user defined with slideshow effect, but I made a few other ones here. I also made a user defined with paginate. Let's go to that page. Here's an example of paginated where we would actually have the user click through the pages to see the headlines and we can control how many of these we want. The other one was called ticker, user-defined ticker. And it just kind of fades in, just a different effect. And again, these are clickable links. So what we've looked at is the newsfeed ticker's main use, and that is for RSS feed, as well as user-defined feeds. They're pretty easy to do, as long as you have the correct URL that you want to feed from. So again, back to, for example, the proxy. Sometimes people will do this and it doesn't work right for whatever reason. And those reasons can be one, your host doesn't allow the use of this service and you may have to switch to curl or vice versa. The other common reason this doesn't work is just not having this address exactly correct. You have to go to the source where you're getting the news and get the actual feed. It's usually not hard to find for most major news sources. If you're gonna get something from somebody, say WordPress blog, it usually is just the word feed followed by the name of their blog. So wherever their blog is .com forward slash feed usually will get you to a WordPress news feed unless they've turned that off for whatever reason. But that usually works. And you can always go check it. So before I made this feed, I actually went to make sure that this brought something up and that it wasn't broken. So when I typed this into my browser, I could see that sure enough, it does bring up an XML file. And again, sometimes it's not formatted, but if it finds the file at all, then you know that that link is working. So that's just some of the ways to troubleshoot when you're building your RSS feeds. Make sure that link is working. You have all of these options for how it is displayed, whether you use continuous scroll or another one, how many items you want to show and how fast do they change or how fast they move in this particular view. So the newsfeed ticker is a great way to get content to your website from another external website or even from another part of your website. It's another really handy tool to use in 90 Second Website Builder.